Hi everybody and welcome to a not so sunny Oldham. Today we're going to take you through this solar PV and battery storage system that we're installing. We've been here for the majority of the week and this one is a battle. Let me show you. So, as you can see, this is a slate roof, and slate roofs are notoriously difficult to fit solar panels onto properly. They're very easy to fit panels onto in an incorrect manner that would allow leaks, but to do it properly, it takes time and it takes effort. So we've left this little section off, we haven't finished this little bit yet, because we're gonna take you through how we slate this in. So you can see here, we've got a plastic flashing, which I'll get you a complete one just here. So this is a plastic flashing and our hook comes through the roof. So we cut a slot in the slate, comes through the roof and then this is a bit of a slate replacement. That sits in and then we cut this row of slates around this little bulge in the flashing and then slate all over the top of it. So you can, you can see then the footprint that we've got covering where that entry point is. Now what we do have, or what we do see on some installs, is this hook just gets screwed straight through the straight through the slate, and then there's a little bit of flash banding that goes on, like little lead lead style flash banding, and it will probably be all right for maybe a few years, but as soon as the the different temperatures and the weather get on it, it'll just start cracking the slate um, and letting water in. Because one of the problems is that when you have the panels on there and there's wind these will bounce a little bit and if you've got pressure on the slate it over time it'll end up cracking it so that's why this is really the only solution i'll show you a little bit more in depth now as to how we get these slates held into position because if this was a a, a re-roof and the full roof was stripped and we were able to put the hooks in and then the the roofing company were able to slate it in afterwards they'll be able to nail every single slate back down because we're retrofitting this, we can't get to where this slate here that we've got left to put in, it nails under these here. So unless you remove those two, you can't nail this one in. If you remove those two, you'd have to remove these three. <laughs> so you end up stripping the full roof if you want to nail them all back in. So what we've got here is we've got some of these haul hooks. We call them pigtails really. But what they do is they're a sprung loaded uh, clip that'll basically hold the slate in place. So if you come in here and have a little look, we've got this little puller here, which allows us to get to this little haul hook when the slate is put, put back into position. We'll do this now as if a slate was in. So we slide the slate back in. Uh, obviously without using this, it would then just slide back out. But then what we do is we pull that and this little tab here then grabs hold of the bottom of the slate and that is then under like a sprung loaded hold. You can see I've got a little one just here. You can see that just poking out. So that grabs hold of the bottom of the slate and holds it up into position. So that means that we don't need to nail this one. We have put a nail in this one because we could get to it anyway, but this one that we're going to install here, we won't have any nails in because we just can't get, you know, like I mentioned, we can't get to them. So yeah, that's the best solution we found. You can use um, copper tingles, which is like a copper strip, but they're not, they're not sprung loaded. So they can, uh, you see some lead ones as well. They can sort of relax over time and then let the slate start to slip out. Whereas this is under tension for all of its life. So, um, so yeah, that's why we're doing that. So on this job, we are fitting 12 Perlite 430 watt all black solar panels, which are one of the new versions of the Perlite panel. You might remember on some of our videos, we had some 415s and some 400s. These are 430s, like anything, it's moving forward. So we're fitting those on this job. We've got six on the east and six on the west face. So we're on one of the faces now. I haven't got my compass, I can't think which, which side. I think we're on the east face now. We did the west face yesterday, so that's all, all up and running. This side, we're gonna have quite a complicated layout. So we're gonna have three in portrait along the bottom. We're then gonna have two in landscape along the top. And then we're gonna have another one in landscape above those two. A saw skirt all the way around this as well to keep the birds out and to make it look a bit nicer. Not that you can see it, but you know, we can see it when we're up here. And 
bit of a different setup as well as to what you might normally see from us. We're not fitting Solar Edge on this one, mainly due to budget. Um, so this is going straight into the Alpha Small 5 battery storage system and uh, basically a DC coupled system and creating a DC coupled system because the solar PV is going to connect directly into the battery inverter and then that battery inverter can control where that DC goes, either straight into the battery or through the inverter and into the home back to the grid, whatever. So that is a, a bit more of a budget cost. We always like to do Solar Edge. However, um, when uh, budgets are a bit tighter, then this is a perfectly good solution and works really, really well. We fit in uh, one battery module for now. Uh, we've made sure that in the future, if the customer wants some more batteries, they can add another one and we've only got really minor adjustments to make. So the, the size of battery storage system that we're fitting is a 5.5 kilowatt hour usable, 5.7 on the badge. So we can take that up to 11 kilowatt hours in the future um, and, and, and further. We can take it up to, I think it's about 27 kilowatt hours, something like that. But we've probably only got the space for about 11 on this job. We can discharge the current system because we've only got one battery module, we can discharge that at 2.5 kilowatts if the customer was to add another battery module in the future that inverter rating goes up to 4.6 kilowatts it's to do with the the c value of the batteries um, but i won't go too far into that for now the dno permission on this we've we've got the dno permission for 4.6 kilowatts so if the customer does want to do that then they can do and we haven't got to go through dno and everything else again which is uh, yeah which is handy because it takes a little bit of time so we're going to crack on now and get some more hooks in, get some slate in, because it might start raining at any point. We're in Oldham and the weather is very, very changeable. So yeah, we're going to crack on. We're going to measure now where our next set of rails fall. We've got a mark on our slate. It's about there, isn't it, Mike? Somewhere there. And our panel is 1722. So that's, that's roughly where that is. Chalk is an absolute lifesaver on these sorts of things. So that is where the top of our first row panels will fall. So we're gonna put our hook on this next row down. So we'll put an X on there, and we know where our rafters are now because we can see where we've, where we've put the hooks in before. So we can just use that as a gauge now and just basically repeat what we've just done down there. Flex conduit's gonna go up and all the way over. The only way for us to get the cables from A to B was to go up and over on this one, unfortunately. But um, there's gonna be very little on show because the panel up on the other side is a bit off the, the ridge and then this one will be a little bit off the ridge as well. On this side, we've got this vent to contend with as well. So we're having to just probably use a different, slightly different layout as to the side. On the other side, we've got a portrait panel up there. This one, we might have to put that landscape, but we've allowed for that. We've shifted the, the system slightly off center, but as far this way as we can, because we've got to try and get that 1722 in that gap there now. So for six panels, there is more thought goes into this than like a 12 or 20 panel job, isn't there, Mike? So it's one of them where you just, you have to just draw it out and that's why chalk is an absolute lifesaver. So yeah, we'll crack on now and we'll get these ripped out. So the conventional way to get slate out was the slate rip and it still works really well. However, with the slate rip, you can end up knackering your slates when you take them out, they can usually uh, snap. Uh, or even the timbers because you're really hammering to, to rip those nails out of the wood and out of the slate. Now with this roof tooth it's got a, effectively a hacksaw blade trapped within a really thin piece of metal. So what that allows us to do is it allows us to go underneath the slate and then cut the uh, aluminium or copper nails that are holding this slate down. So that's what I'm going to do now, that's what Mike's on with. And yeah, we're going to take these out and then we can get these other hooks flashed in. Bosh, just like that. What I'm doing here is we could take this slate out and cut it. However, because we know where this rafter is, because it just basically runs all the way up, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my uh, goggles and um, air defenders on, obviously, and cut this in situ so that we don't have to disturb all these slates. We might have to just make some sort of a adjustment and we might have to take that one out, to be fair, to get the flashing in. But if this was slightly more central, then you can, you can actually cut these in situ and you don't always have to take them out then. Um, it just speeds things up, but it also means you don't disturb as many slates. Um, so... So I'm going to get on with now.
Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so just a quick one here. We've got these ones in portrait down here, uh, but we've got these ones in landscape along the top. And you can see this is where our two landscape panels meet on top of our portrait one. And what we've got to consider now is the rails for the landscape panels are gonna go vertical. So there's basically a bracket, an L bracket, that fits onto the side of these, and the, the rail will shoot up the side of these rails, up the side of these hooks. But what we don't want is we don't want to end up with our rails being too far from the edge of our panels because otherwise the panels flex and bounce and you can crack the silicon inside and um, yeah and they can rattle as well. The reason we draw, we've drawn this out is to try and make sure that we're, um, uh, that we're within, it's a, it's a quarter of the panel's length um, so we're, we're about 250 mil away on either side for this one so that's well within what we need and then the, what, the hook over that side it's literally right on the edge um, probably about 100, within 100 mil so we're okay there um, what you can do to get a little bit more play on these is you can put the L bracket either side of the hook so you can basically gain a little bit so with these we're going to move the, the rail to be that side on this hook so it runs up or, or on this version and then the same on that version but on this side just to bring us a little bit close to the edge of the panel so that we we're supporting it right on the edges but you'll see that as we as we get on with it so we ventured inside because the weather has turned on us so we're going to crack on inside um myself and michael were out on the roof um, bill has been inside living it up <laughs> not really but doing the ac side of the system and getting those dc cables down into the alpha and doing the really important stuff of getting all of that ready for us to turn it on so i thought i'd show you where we've made our main ac connection into this property so on the back of this wall we've brought some trunking down the wall and that's got our supply cable for the alpha um, okay so this is what we've got down here so if you come over here a little bit I'll show you what we've got. We haven't done any labeling here yet. Um, none of this is energized either. We're sort of mid install, if you like. So we've installed this uh, eight way Hager DB with surge protection. We've then got our main switch to isolate the full board. We've then got our solar circuit or our solar and battery circuit, if you like, because it's a C coupled and like hybrid system. Uh, then we've got our meter circuit, so that powers this little meter. And that little meter is what uh, takes the readings from the CT clamp, which we'll have a look at in a minute, and uh, converts that into a readable signal for the battery to see. That then communicates to the alpha battery via a Cat6 cable, um, and then the battery will decide if to charge or discharge based on what this uh, is telling it. But we'll have a look at the CT clamp, and I'll explain a little bit more of that in a minute. We've then got a uh, 30 milliamp RCD Type A, now, there's been a lot of chat around using RCBOs in these sorts of installations. And what we found is that these double mod RCDs are bi-directional. Um, and there's not many RCBOs that, that are, I think it's only Proteus that, have, that we found that are. So when, we've, when we're doing a Hager install, we use this double mod RCD because these ones are bi-directional. Usually we wouldn't want to put the alphas or solar on an RCD, not because it's not safe, but because it can sometimes cause nuisance tripping. Quite rarely, to be honest, but it can do. So we always try and install the AC cable from here to the battery or the inverter in a way that doesn't require that, that 30 milliamp RCD protection. However, with this, we've had to fish a lot of the cable under floors, up walls, so we can't guarantee that that cable is more than 50 mil away from the surface of the wall, and therefore we need RCD protection. So that's why we've got that in here. So all that happens is uh, we come out of this MCB, and then we feed the top of this RCD, and then we come out the bottom of this RCD into our AC isolator. 
So this ACI slate is 32 amps, which is obviously the rating of the of the circuit. And it's uh, yeah, a real nice G-Wiz isolator. So we've got one here and we'll have a look at the other one we've got up in the uh, where Bill's working at the minute. So we've got local isolation. If someone's working on this board or this board, they can isolate the solar and battery system from here. Uh, and likewise, if they're working up there, they can isolate it up there. We've then got our bi-directional generation meter. So this will log energy coming back from the uh, alpha and also energy um, going to the alpha. When you've got the, a hybrid system or a DC coupled system like the alpha is on this install, to work out what you have actually generated, you can obviously go on the alpha app, it's the easiest way, but if for example there was a problem with that or the customer changed the system or whatever, then through MCS regulations we've got to fit this meter and because we can set that battery to grid charge and effectively buy power in when it's cheapest and generate power and therefore send it back down into this into this board the system has got to work out well okay how much has the uh, system purchased so how much has it bought in from the grid and how much has it sent back it can then go right we know that it's sent back 100 kilowatt hours down from the battery into the property but it purchased 50 that means that it must have self-generated 50 they can act as a normal generation meter and it goes okay the net of what your system has done is it's generated 50 50 kilowatt hours that's that's why this has to be bi-directional to get our ac connection in uh, we've got some 10 mil cable because we've actually only got a 32 amp and a 6 amp and that 6 amp is only doing that meter so that'll be less than an amp that, that that'll be taking uh, so we've got a 10 mil cable and that's going to be fed from a 40 amp mcb which is going to be fed out of this bg board we're going to rejig this a little bit and put an mcb before any of the rcds so that we don't have any tripping on on here uh, from this board and the only rcd then in this in the system for our system will be that one here and that's what we've got down here we kept it all nice and compact uh, just so that uh, the customer can he's talking about possibly removing this and then just putting in a little box round around the whole lot so that's why we've we've tucked it all away in this nice little corner so we're going to crack on and get this powered up as well uh, so that when bill's ready we can turn it on do some testing and then get the system up and running onto the internet Okay, so we've ventured upstairs and we're in the what, what is a bit of a spare room slash gym and this is the location for our alpha battery. We've got the alpha stood here pride of place. So this is a small five. We can have a maximum of 4.6 kilowatts out of this. I mentioned before that uh, we've only got one battery module here at the minute, which is 5.5 kilowatt hours of usable storage capacity. We can, if we were to add another unit, we've left enough space above it where we could basically just lift this inverter up and, and slot another um, battery module directly on top of the existing one. What's different to some of our other videos is that this has the DC coming straight into it. So we, we don't have a solar edge inverter or any other type of inverter. Everything comes into the alpha. So we're using the alpha as our uh, solar and our battery inverter. So you can see Bill's very neatly got this, um, some trunking in along here because we had a couple of issues with the loft. It's boarded out as an office, so we could only get in in a certain location. So we've just got to put some end caps and uh, give it all a good wipe down, but we've just got, we've got a straight uh, piece of 25 mil conduit here with the D-line fire clips on. We then got, just around the corner, we've got our two DC isolators. So one for the front, one for the back. Um, and that then feeds into our DC surge protection. So you can see here we've got, again, uh, surge protection here for this string, surge protection here for this string, and then out of that, we're gonna have some white flexible conduit that comes down just because everything else is in white, straight down, and then into this little bay here, which is basically like a bit of an access panel for all the wiring. So I'll come down here just to show you that in a little bit more detail. So we've got, we've got two strings. So we've got two sets of DC cables, one for the front, one for the back, and they come in and they plug in underneath the inverter. So they just come in and plug in under there. We've then got this earth cable. So that comes uh, from our AC isolator, which I'll show you in a minute. 
and that is going to get fed back through the flexible conduit and up and that is what's going to earth our surge protection devices um, and that'll provide the the route back to earth for if they ever need to operate which hopefully they never do we've then got our ac connection under here so uh, from our ac isolator we've then got this six mil three core ho7 flex so that's going to come down and that, that'll connect into our AC, AC terminals. And that'll be the route that the battery will use to send power back into the house or to buy power in to charge the batteries on off peak uh, situation. So that just comes through there. You can see we've done everything kind of back entry on, on these bits. Uh, we haven't done any of the DC back entry because at, at all costs we try and avoid uh, burying DC cables in the wall because DC cables, they don't have an RCD or anything else like that. They just, the, the only thing that protects them from burning out is the size of the cable being able to handle the short circuit current capacity. There's probably a whole video on that that we could do, which we may look to do in the future. Uh, but that's why a lot of this is surface mounted because we just don't want to bury any of those cables. But because we've got the RCD on the AC side, it means that we don't have to, we, we've avoided any trunking or conduit on the AC side and we brought that through here. So there's a cover that will go on here and it'll it'll hide all of these cables and and yeah make it a nice neat looking final installation. You can see here we've got our AC isolator so it looks exactly the same isolator as the one downstairs and that just provides us with some local isolation for the battery system and and yeah, gives us gives us a nice little local, local isolation there. We've kept it nice and high as well, so that if, when, when and if the customer has another battery module, we can pull some of these back and basically just take them in a little bit higher. We may even have to surface clip that cable in the future if they want to go another battery module, but we'll we'll make that assessment at the time. For now, we've done everything we can to future proof it for another module uh, in the future. We've got our fireboards on this as well. So we've got, we've got our fireboards, but these ones are only six mil because we've used some 12 mil OSB timber because this is actually a Latin plaster wall. Now there's a lot of weight here, but it's sat on the floor. Um, this is obviously not sat on the floor, but this is the real heavy, heavy beast, if you like, especially if we add a second battery module to it. And so that's sat on the floor and all of our fixings are doing is basically just stopping it falling forward. But still, we wanted it to be safe and secure. So we've, we've used some OSB, fixed those to the uprights in the wall, and then clad that with some six mil fireboard just to make sure that if this kicks out a bit of heat, which hopefully in the summer it will do and the winter, that'd be nice. But that means that it's operating and it's working hard uh, saving these customer loads of money on their electricity bills. So we want to protect that OSB from um, scorching or anything like that. So we, we put this fireboard on. And I think that's pretty much it. We've got an internet connection just here. So the customer has had um, wired internet connections uh, put into pretty much every room. So we've just got to uh, alter and move that box along a little bit because it was just too tight to where we needed to get our boards. So that's just got to be altered, but we've got our cable just here ready to come out and plug into one of those ports there so that it's got a hardwired internet connection, which is this one here. Um, so that we're, we're not relying on any Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is pretty, pretty solid on these anyway, but um, it's always best if you can get a hardwired connection. And that is the Alpha. That, that is mid-install Alpha as well. So yeah. Okay, we're gonna leave that video here for today. It's absolutely peeing it down. Um, thank you very much for coming and watching us doing a mid-install video. We haven't done many of those. So we'll try and circle back to this job to show you the finished article when we get it done. But we're going to be back here Monday to get all the panels on and hopefully have some better weather. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. But do it quickly because I'm going inside. Thanks very much.